was that? I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that was a Bigfoot. Let me tell you a story. Welcome to another Bigfoot campfire story. As many things happen on logging roads, both in the U.S. and Canada. More times things happen that no one ever hears about, as it may just destroy that entire industry. A driver of a logging truck named Curtis happened to hit something while transporting logs back to the mill. This is that story. Well, I'll start out by saying I've driven truck one way or another most of my adult life. I got my CDL at the age of 22 and started long haul driving as that was my passion. After 20 years of being on the road, I decided I wanted a little less travel in my life and I took a job as a logging truck driver as it put me home nearly every night. We've been running logs from Copper Mountain for about two months now, and the loads were always full and heavy. We got a bonus each month if we managed not to have an accident or loss of any load, so we really worked hard to hustle, yet be safe. After months of driving the same dirt roads over and over, they become so normal that the danger tends to melt away after just a short time. The boss has been pushing us harder and harder. We'd gotten behind after a few loads behind the reins. The roads got shitty and the drivers put their foots down and they just did the best that they could. Well, on this particular day, we were running loads clear up until dark as it just had to get done. And I was on my final pickup load of the day. Charlie, one of the other drivers, was waiting right behind me and they were loading us both to get out for the day. They finished my load up first, and Charlie had just a few minutes behind me, so I went ahead and started down the mountain. Well, it was getting dark and started hard to see the roads, but I knew Charlie wouldn't slow down any being the last load of the day, so I pushed the speed a little more than I should have. Sure enough, as I changed gears, I felt a large impact with the front of the truck. So much so, it knocked the whole truck kind of sideways and jacked the trailer hookups all wonky. Well, I threw them on the flashers, and I got out of the truck. I figured it had to have been a boulder that rolled down in place after our last trip up the mountain or something. I walked around the back of the truck and set out a couple of flares and then went up to see what I hit. Well, as I walked up on the passenger side of the truck, I could see an animal laying out in front of the truck about 20 yards. I must have hit a bear, although the hair was longer and not quite a black or brown coloring. It wasn't moving, and there was a lot of blood around the top of the body. It must be dead for sure. Well, I heard Charlie coming down the hill, so I jumped in the truck and got on the radio to tell him to slow down and stop behind me. And good thing as it did, because he almost had to lock up the brakes to stop in time. Well, he got out of the truck, and we both approached this dead animal together. But when we got up to it, the odd smell and shape of the creature, well, we realized this was no bear. This thing had to be seven or eight feet tall, long covered in that strangely long auburn hair, had the face of a man save for the weird low jaw and the ridges above the eyes, a domed head, and very long arms and fingers. Charlie looked over at me and said, Do you know what this is? I said to him, It's a Sasquatch like they talk about on those TV shows. Uh-uh, he replied, But this is a whole lot of trouble. Charlie walked back to his truck and radioed up to the hill where Tim the foreman was located, and he joined us down at the site. Well, Tim started in with the, how much do you like your job, boys? To which we replied, of course, a whole lot. Well, Tim told us both that this isn't the first time that there are trucks that hit one of these things, and it just turns into trouble. Logging gets shut down, we lose millions, and the boss isn't having it anymore. We gotta dispose of this thing, and fast. Well, Tim and Charlie rolled the thing out of the way as I got a pry bar to get the fender off of my tire so the truck could be drivable. Now, no fluids were leaking, so it should run and get this load back to town. Tim told me to fire up the truck and get it back to the mill. Don't ever ask any questions to anyone about this ever again. I asked Kyle to explain the damage to the truck, to which he said it'll be fixed by morning. Don't worry about it. Charlie got back in his truck, fired it up, and hit the air horn. And as I got back in the truck, I noticed Tim grabbing a jerry can from his truck. And as I started up and drove, I saw him light the animal on fire right where the carcass was. 
So Charlie and I dropped the trucks back at the mill after unloading, and he and I didn't say much to each other. Charlie said one fella never got the message not to talk about this type of thing, and now he can't find a logging job anywhere. This isn't what I need in my life, that's for sure. Well, in the morning, I got back to the lot the next day, and I was assigned a nice newer truck, much nicer than I had before. Well, we drove on past where I thought we would have seen the burn marks in the ground where they burnt that big foot in place, but strangely, there was a newly plowed road in that area, making it much wider and safer. I will admit, though, that was the only time I ever saw one in my entire career with the logging company. Well, this driver's silence was only broken long after he retired. I gathered the story in the early 2000s, and I'm sure many more have happened since then. Thanks for listening. I'm Reverend Jeff, and may the Squatch be with you.